Welcome to Easy Peasy Books, From Author to Authority, the lively and engaging podcast for business professionals who've always believed they have a book in them. I'm your host, Jillian Whitney. Join me as I chat with authors and industry experts from all around the world to explore simple strategies to write, publish, and leverage your business book. Whether you're an entrepreneur, executive, or an employee, this podcast is for you. Woohoo! And I'm live once again on another Tuesday. Just so you know, today I'm live, live, no previous recording today. And I got guys doing rocks outside the apartment today. So hopefully they won't keep coming back. And so that's how you know it's live because you might hear the rock guy. So anyways, my name is Jillian Whitney, and I'm here today with Bitmo Jillian. She's around here somewhere, so I'll pop her up in a second. And just so you know, this is what we're talking about today. The good, the bad, and the ugly of Amazon book reviews. And I intended for this live experience and later the podcast to be about Amazon reviews, book reviews, from the perspective of the reader and the author. So just, you know, if you if you read books, you might want to stick around. And if you write books and you want more reviews and you want to know some tips and tricks, um, well, not never tricks, but tactics, then uh, we'll cover a lot of ground today. So that is our topic and we're going to get stuck right in and I'm going to ignore the rock guys. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me bring on Bitmojillion. And so here she is. We're back in Texas. So she's got the cowboy hat on today and she's like, dar tootin, dar tootin. So we're just going to go through and I like to stay focused. So what are the good things about Amazon book reviews? So first of all, um, you got to love them because they're good for the reader. They're good for the author. And I know I have been reading books for years. I have been reading books longer than I've been writing books. And I have always relied on a review in order to figure out, is this a good book or not? And I will look at the reviews. Uh, you know, we all look at the reviews. We do it. They say 82% of the people will look at a review before they, they select a product on Amazon. And it, the same is true for books. So I know when I go through and I look at a book and I'm trying to figure out, do I want to buy this or not buy this book? The reviews are everything for me. And if I see like, you know, tons and tons of one star reviews and I hear things like this, the formatting of this book was horrible. I couldn't read it. Pages were cut off or, you know, was it, it's chopped up or there's not enough white space. I'm not going to invest my money and in buying this book if it gets a really bad review. So reviews are social proof. We use these on LinkedIn. Everybody knows if you go to somebody's profile and you saw a bunch of bad reviews, would you necessarily want to hire that person? Same with Google. You go to Google reviews. Amazon reviews are no different. So they are social proof. So we like these as readers for when we're checking out books on Amazon. And we also like these as authors. So let's go through the good. So social proof. And the good thing about Amazon is they kind of make it really easy to write a review. But then that's what I like. So I'm going to kind of break down what all is in an Amazon review. So first of all, there's the stars. That's the first thing. So when you're reading a Kindle book, and you know you can read a Kindle book. On, you don't have to have a Kindle to read a Kindle book. So you could be reading it on your your iPhone or your iPad or even your desktop computer, tablet, whatever. But when you get to the end of the book, Amazon actually pops up this screen, and I'll describe it for anybody who's not looking at my screen. And what it is is it said, "Hey, before you go, would you like to give this book a review?" Which is kind of nice. Now, Amazon knows people are busy, so you can just tap the stars, and that's the first part of the review. And that part is called the rating. And so you can actually just tap and give it five stars and then be done with your day. And that's it. You know, you, you, you've uh, given somebody a rating. I don't find that particularly helpful. So I actually like to give a full review. So if you want to add a review, you would add, add your starts from one to five, five being good and one being not so good. And then next thing is a headline. And you want a headline for your review that, and this is required, and you want a headline that's short and snappy, something that summarizes what you what you have to say about the book. So kind of think of it 
as the hook is your headline. And you want that to be short and snappy. And then you want to add a review. And Amazon actually gives you an idea that, first of all, you have to have at least 20 words. So it can't just be good. <laughs> Thumbs up. You know, it's got to be a little bit meatier than that. So you need at least 20 words. I believe the maximum is about 5,000 characters, something along that line. And I believe that they say pretty much from 70 to, I think it's about maybe 200. That's sort of the average of what people do. So, you know, it gives you an idea. I personally kind of stick to one or two paragraphs and try to make my reviews short and snappy and, you know, uh, just like my headlines. And they actually give you some suggestions. So Amazon says, what did you like or dislike? Uh, what would you, what, what would you recommend? Who would you recommend this book for? So that's a really good thing that's like, this is a great book for people that are just starting out on LinkedIn, or this is good book for people that love fantasy fiction or whatever, you know, naming that audience is really good. That's it makes a good review. And then why did you choose the rating you did? So that's referring to the stars. So if you chose a one-star rating, hopefully you don't, we don't do many of those, you'd be saying, it's because it. I couldn't read the font, it was blurry, it was missing in pages, it was all scrunched up, you know, things were wrong. You would explain yourself, and the same for a good rating. You want to say, this book was a game changer for me. I read this book, and I was able to, you know, tackle this in my business, and as a result, I'm really excited, and now I have a strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So those are kind of some of the things that you want to put in your review. And then you just click and it's posted to Amazon. So you can do reviews right within the Amazon app with the Kindle app, which is, again, on your iPad, phone, desktop, whatever. But most of the time, I'm doing my reviews on the desktop. I'm going to Amazon.com and I go to the book of where I bought my book. And then there's a little box that says write a review. And that's where I put in a review. And the nice thing is, is that you can actually, I got, I, I'm showing Jeff Young's book here. Um, but I, the nice thing about when you add a review, you also have the option of adding photographs and you have the option of adding a video. And so what I'm, what I'm showing right now on my screen is I'm showing me with, with a photo. And when you post a photo, you want to be holding the book. You know, you just, you don't want yourself just waving. You want to be posting the book. Or you and the book, but it's really about the book. It's not about you. So it, you know, don't don't post yourself by yourself. You know, try and try and put the the picture of the book up because it just gives us warm fuzzies that you know we see the book in so many different places. And some people are very very creative with how they put their pictures. So it's kind of fun. So if you don't want to be on camera, you could be reading the book and your little eyes are above you know holding the book or something like that. And then, of course, you can post a, a video and Kevin Turner, uh, Kevin D. Turner has posted an awesome video for uh, Jeff Young's Be Effective on Be Effective on LinkedIn with the LinkedIn Guru. And it's a great video. And I'm going to give you a tip. Now, when you post a video and your review and you post your uh, review and a picture, it takes a long time to get approved, like a long time, like. I think Kevin did a, view, a review for me once and he did a video and I think it took like three weeks and he was like, he felt so bad. It took that long. So here's my tip. Do your review first as a text review and it gets posted very, very quickly, like within a day or two, it should be up and posted. And then once that's posted, go back and add a photograph or add your video. So that way, you know, while it's being approved, the, the regular text review still stays there. And then all of a sudden, boop, you know, your picture gets added or your video gets added. So that's kind of my my little tip of um, how to do reviews and, and get those photos in. And the interesting thing is that there's a little button under reviews and I'll say helpful. I call it the helpful button. And that's so that you can, as as readers, when we go to Amazon, if we watch Kevin's review and we watch his video and we go, wow, that was really helpful guess what? Click that helpful button because it kind of pushes that review up. It's kind of like it's giving it a vote. You know, it's giving it an upvote to go up higher. And so if you see reviews that you like and you go, wow, that was, that was really, really helpful. I like that. Upvote it. You know, hit that helpful button. And it's interesting. You can only do it for your country. So if I see reviews by people that are in the UK, because I'm in the USA, there's no helpful button. 
So um, not that the UK isn't helpful, of course they are, but I think we only see the review helpful button for people in our own country and you don't see them under your own. So why is that? You can't be upvoting your own thing. <laughs> so if you don't see the helpful button under your own, that's why. Now, what you will see under your own is that you can edit it. And that's how you would go in and add your picture, add a video. Or if you're like me, you're like, oh, gosh, I had a typo, you know, and, and now I'm going to look like an idiot for all time because I've got this typo on my review. That's OK. Go in, edit it, change it. So that's just kind of a nice thing to know. So that is the good about Amazon reviews. So let's move along and let's talk about the bad of Amazon reviews. So the first thing is when they get declined, <laughs> you just like, what? And you, you go to all the time and the trouble and, you know, you've read a good book and you want to give it a, a good review and you go to all that time and trouble and it gets declined and Amazon Sometimes we'll just send you, sometimes they send you an email. It's, it's all different how it, how it happens. But usually you get a message or a map or an email that says it didn't meet community guidelines. And you're like, what does that even mean? You're, you're, you're just like Bitmojillion and this cat. They're like, what? You know, I don't even know what that means. So there's a couple of reasons why your Amazon review that you're trying to give in all good, good heart is getting declined. Number one. If you didn't spend $50 within the last year on Amazon using a credit card or a debit card, you cannot post a review. So that's number one. You can't, and you can't post reviews if you're also not locked into Amazon. So you can't be an anonymous Amazon person. So that's interesting to know. Um, you don't necessarily have to have bought the book on Amazon. So I'll, I'll remember to talk about that in a minute. That's called a verified purchase if you have, but there are reasons why you would and wouldn't. But anyways, you have to have spent $50 in your Amazon account within the last year using a credit card or using a debit card. Now, I got hit with this once where I had all these gift cards. People were giving me gift cards. They know I'm a book nut nut. So they were giving me gift, gift cards for presents and birthday presents. And a couple of clients gave me tips and they gave me you know gift cards. And it was, was I love Amazon cards. I love them. So anyways, I kind of had all these Amazon gift cards and I didn't spend any money because I had all these gift cards and I was using them as my book fund because, you know, in our family, my husband has his own Amazon account and that's where our prime was. So we were ordering our products and stuff through his account, but mine was just for my books and my reading. And I could not give reviews for two years because I had so much, I, had the, I think I had $300 in gift cards. So it took me a long time to spend all that spend all that uh, gift card stuff. But anyways, I could not post reviews. And that was heartbreaking because I saw books and I wanted to review them, but I couldn't. So I'm trying to make up for lost time now. So that is the first thing that will decline you. The second thing that you could be declined for is you cannot give reviews to family members that live in the same household as you. You shouldn't give reviews to family members, period, you know, because it's like, is your mother really going to be honest and objective and give you a one-star review? I don't think so, unless she's really mean. And so for the most part, you Amazon does not, they in their guidelines, their community guidelines, and I'll post them here so that everybody can see these community guidelines. They say you should not, you should not be using friends and, uh, sorry, friends and family. So family members in the same uh, household, you're on the same IP address. So Amazon knows so you can't just go, oh, I'll just go to the library. You know, you don't want to do it. So you don't you don't want to, you know, do the people that live in the same household with you and friends. How does Amazon know who your friends are? Your friends are probably you sent them gift cards. <laughs> you've sent them you've sent them presents over the year. They're, you're in your Amazon history. So friends are a no no. However, what about colleagues? And so my LinkedIn friends are really colleagues and they're colleagues who have become friends. And so a lot of times if they've read my book or I've read their book or whatever, it's because I'm generally interested in what your book is about. I, I have a lot of people I know who have written books. I don't buy everybody's book because I would run out of money. I kind of did run out of my gift card. So I have to be selective about who I buy books from and, and, and about and so if I read a good book and they're an, a LinkedIn colleague that is a friend, I, I personally don't feel any problem with doing that. So, but 
friends who I just go out and travel with and go to coffee with and, you know, whatever. And they have nothing to do. They don't know my business. They don't know what I do, whatever. Most of them go, live stream? What is it? What kind of business is that? I wouldn't ask them to give me a review. And I wouldn't even ask my sister to give me a review, even though she could use my book. And I gave her a copy of my book last week. I would tell her, please don't give me a review, even though we have different last names. We live in different cities. But I have, you have bought stuff. I bought you birthday presents. You've bought me birthday presents. We're related. Amazon would know. And so I would say, don't do it. I don't want to have that problem. So those are some of the reasons why your Amazon review can be declined. Another reason you can be declined is that it was too promotional. What your review, what you said in your review was too promotional, which means you're promoting the author and not the book. And so you may love the person that wrote the book. You may know them personally, but that is not helpful to people who are buying the book. They don't need to know that this is the greatest person who's ever walked the planet. And, you know, you've known them for 20 million years. That doesn't count. What they want to know about the book. So they want to know is what is the value in the book? So here's what I do. I step back from when uh, from the person and the relationship of when I'm reviewing somebody's book. So I will look at it and I will say, how does this have value for the people that read it? Meaning I'm talking to the audience. So I actually refer to people as the author of this book, not just my friend so-and-so. Never do that. You know, be objective and, and take that step back and make sure that you're reviewing the book. I always like to give a takeaway of what was the best part for me, you know, I recently did a review for Annette Richmond, and I really appreciated that she talked about, for her book, that she talked about captioning, because I that's something I really highly believe in. And she was talking about the importance of videos and captioning. And I was really glad that she included how to caption your videos. I was glad she did that. So I worked that into my review because I think that is something of value. So that is another reason why Amazon could hit your review is if you were too... Uh, promotional about the author as opposed to the book. Also too, you could be declined because your your review was harassment or libelous or, you know, like you were attacking somebody, not because you didn't like the book, but you didn't like the person. And so that's another reason why your review couldn't be declined. But I'm finding for the most part, it's not having spent that $50. That's the number one thing why people get declined. And then number two, it's because you worded your review too much about the author. So here's what I suggest. When you go to post an Amazon review, go ahead and cop, like type it out in a Word document or, you know, a, a, a note or, you know, whatever you, whatever you type in, Google, Google Sheet, no, whatever you do. Keep that and then copy and paste it into your review. So write your headline, make it short and snappy, write your review. And then save that file for a couple of days. And then if Amazon comes back and says it didn't meet our community guidelines and you know it's not because you didn't spend $50 and you know hmm, maybe it's going to go back and rewrite that review, you have it there and you can tweak it and you can maybe say, oh, maybe I better you know do this and, and do that. And then you can resubmit it. And that's a lot easier than like, oh, no, now I got to go from scratch and write it all over again. So that is the bad. And to be honest with you, I don't think that is like the $50 thing. You might say, well, that's kind of bad. Why is that? That's a bad thing. Amazon makes us have to spend money. Actually, I don't think that is a bad thing. I think it's actually a good thing because this is stopping people from having a bunch of fake Amazon accounts and uh, basically reviewing books and you know, I could be an author and I just say, OK, I'm just going to hire a bunch of people to go out and create these fake little Amazon accounts and they're going to review my book. And then I'll, you know, oh, I'll have all these reviews. So it stops the cheaters. So in essence, I think that's actually a good thing. So I, I kind of like that. I just wish they let us use gift cards. But maybe the gift cards could be a way that you could influence people. So you know, maybe that's why they don't want to use the gift cards because maybe you could send me a gift card and then expect me to write reviews because you sent me this gift card. So eh, it's just kind of keeping it fair. And I think that's a good thing. Okay. What's the ugly? The ugly is that there are fake people doing stuff out there. There are whole industries that actually are, are, uh, 
they have a whole thing going where they do fake reviews. They do fake reviews. And remember I told you, you do not have to have bought the book on Amazon in order to leave a review. And the reason why Amazon allows this is, what if you went and bought it in a bookstore? You know, what if you went and bought it? What if you went to an author's talk and you bought the copy from the author at the back of the room? Amazon doesn't want to penalize people just because they didn't buy it on Amazon. So you can, maybe you got an advanced reader's copy and you didn't, you didn't buy the book, but you read the book. And so that's a really important thing. You want to have read the book before you give a review. And so Amazon is saying, okay, if you've read the book and they can verify that you have actually purchased the book through Amazon, then it's known as a verified review. And that actually has more weight than the other reviews. And, but there is a whole industry and I've known a couple of people who have published books and then they've been approached by companies that say, if you pay us a fee, we can get all these reviews for you. And it's like, no, 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 no. Stay away from that. That is a pod. And speaking of pods, there's author pods where authors will get together and it's like, I'll give you a review. You give me a review. We give each other a review. And they're kind of like doing all this under the table. So again, you don't want to be part of that. That's all the fakey stuff that can go on. Just like we don't like LinkedIn pods, we don't want to get into Amazon review pods, book review pods either. So that's, again, something to stay clear of. There's also two people that do a lot of um, unsavory things by promising people things so that they'll write a review. Like you can, you'll be a member of our community and there's a sweepstake and you could win this and you could win that and you know, you get to read it in advance. But then on the day one, you have to go post a review. You know what? Even if somebody gives you a copy of a book for free, you do not have to post a review. And Amazon will back you on that. Amazon does not want people that are giving you an incentive to post a review. So even if somebody, you gave them a free copy, I gave a free copy every single time I published a book. I gave free copies. I can't expect those people to go give me reviews. It'd be nice. But I can't expect them and I can't say, well, I give it to you for free. So you owe me a review. No way. Nobody owes anybody anything. So people have to be free to give a review and it has to be an honest review because nobody should ever feel I've got to go write this fake review because they gave me a copy and I was part of their launch team. If you don't feel that you can give an honest review, then just don't give a review. That That's what I would then. I, I've. I've had people give me books to read and I just didn't care for them. And I, in all honesty, if I was brought up to, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. So that's how I went through life and that's how I recommend it for others. So that's what I just want to say. And also too, Amazon is putting steps in place to handle these fake reviews and what they are doing is they actually have AI. There's a fabulous video that Amazon has, and I will link that in the comments as well. And they talk about when reviews go and you're just like, why does my review take so long? It's because Amazon is putting it through AI checks to find out your, your history, the history of the person who gave the review. Um, when did they give the review? Who are they giving the reviews to? All these things are being checked by Amazon before your Amazon review gets approved. And then after the bots, if there's questions, then it goes on to a human. So it could get flagged for human inspection as well. So, and then think about a video. If you post a video, that video has got to go through and Amazon actually transcribes those videos because you see captions in the video. If you go back and watch Kevin's caption, it's captioned. And I actually caption my own videos for Amazon because I'll always blow my name. So I actually caption now my videos and I put in the uh, closed cap uh, the um, uh, open captions burned into the video so that that way you know you can see what I'm saying but there's even a CC button so you can see it so Amazon is transcribing those videos and they're putting captions on those videos so it's doing a lot of things so now you make it you understand why does it take so long and they got to make sure that Kevin's not saying anything bad or or good or whatever all of that takes time same with the picture what if the picture was naughty? And you know what I'm saying? If it was a naughty picture, Amazon has to have the checks and make sure that's a good a good video, a good image to be putting up. So this all takes time. So Amazon's on top of it. 
And they said, what they do is they are penalizing people. They will take down your review. That's the first thing. They will block your account. Uh, they can, you can be kicked off Amazon. So like, oh my gosh, who would ever want to get kicked off Amazon? It's my lifeblood. You can also be, uh, there's litigation and Amazon's actually now taking people to court and they apparently litigated against a Facebook group because it was these Facebook people that were doing face, uh, you know, reviews for each other. It's sort of an author pod on Facebook. So all this stuff is happening and Amazon's on top of it. So I actually think the ugly is being turned into good because I think Amazon's on it. So I like that. I like that. Okay. And then... Just a couple of tips for authors. Keep it honest. Encourage people to give an honest review. Um, you can't ask people to, you know, don't put pressure on people. Don't, don't, don't do anything. Let let people give an honest review. Uh, if you have um, a, one of the best ways to get reviews is, of course, if you do a launch team. I don't do those, but other people do, and they work. And you can also just ask your beta readers. If you had beta readers, they read your book, you know, ask them if they if they enjoyed the book. Just say, if you enjoyed the book, you know, I, I'd love to hear. Yeah, I'd love to see if you, you would give me a, a, a review. So that's kind of an honest way without, you know, doing anything. Adding in a call to action on your LinkedIn post, but even in your book, I did that. At the end of my book, I put a if you like this book, please help me spread the word. And I just said, I would just so appreciate it if you would go on Amazon and give me a review. So that's kind of easy, but you have to remind people. They say that only 1% to 2% of the population give reviews, and yet 82% of the people want the reviews. So we have a disconnect here, and we need to give more reviews. And another thing is, give reviews to indie authors who you who you've read their book, you know, the Brene Browns of the world, they don't need us as much, but the independent small guy, our, our independent authors, the self-published people, we need those reviews. We need that social proof. So if you have a choice, help out the little guy so that the book is in front of more people and it helps get the word out. So you can't expect people to give you reviews if you've never given a single review. So it's kind of like you got to be nice you got to be, kind of be cool to be kind, as Russ John says, you know, just be kind, be nice, help out p other people. It's just a really great thing. And if that book had value, just think if you let people know you're paying it forward. So there we go. So I hope I've wrapped it up. I'm going to hop over to the comments now and see if anybody has any questions. I feel like I just taught a class. <laughs> I don't know if this is good. But anyways, here's just me. Uh, we'll, we'll take these comments and see what we do. I'm still learning and growing myself. Okay, so uh, Jeff Young says, why am I hearing Sergio Leone music right now? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's not coming for me. Maybe it's a guy that is is, is doing the rocks outside. Uh, say hello to Bitmo Jillian for me. I love her books too. She's amazing. I, I, should, I should one day have a Bitmo Jillian just I'll have her do the slides and I'll just be here, you know, supporting her. So she's just so cute. I love her. And Jeff says, thank you for showing my book and using me as an example. Yes, Josh, Jeff, Jeff's book is, is a great book. And I love, I love that uh, we're all, uh, I saw a wonderful, um, I saw a wonderful uh, book review this to this morning, Wendy Harris. I think I, Wendy Harris, I have it on my profile and she did a wonderful book review for Jeff. Jeff, you need to go back now and ask Wendy, could you please put that video on my Amazon uh, page? So that would be good because she did a video review and it was just absolutely brilliant. Tina says, hey, great to see your book, Jeff. So Tina is here. Yay. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. And, and interesting thing about Tina I recently did a review for Tina because she did her um, her headhunter. How to? I'm terrible with names of books when I'm in the moment. But Tina just released a book two weeks ago, and it was uh, about how to be found by recruiters on LinkedIn in Spanish. And I especially loved her book because she worked so hard to make her little sketch notes in Spanish as well. So anyways, I did part of my review in Spanish. I think I did the headline in Spanish and my review in English. And afterwards, I found out, ooh, you are only allowed to do reviews in the language of the Amazon platform. So on Amazon.com, you can only do, re do reviews in English and Spanish. So lucked out for me because I didn't know that. Um, 
But if you gave your review in French, it wouldn't make it. Now in Canada, which is a bilingual country of, you know, everybody knows I'm Canadian, right? So that's a bilingual country. So you can do your reviews in probably English and French. Somebody who's Canadian, please go let me know if this is true or not. So um, that's his, but you wouldn't be able to do Spanish because that's probably not an official language on the Amazon.ca platform. So it's just kind of interesting that you need to be doing your reviews. And so I gave Tina a, a Spanish review because it was just kind of fun. So anyways, sorry, long-winded. Eh. Greetings from Belgium. Thank you, Tina, for coming today. That's a better, that's a better thing. Tina German, it's so nice to, it's so nice of Jillian to use my book as an example. Yeah, I love, I love to always, you know, share the love with everybody. Uh, Karen is here today. Yay, she's showing up. Hello, Jillian and company. Sometimes Karen's comments don't come through. I don't know, but they're here today. You've bribed them. <laughs> what did I bribe? I, I never bribe people. So, but that is the biggest thing. Don't, don't bribe people. Make, make it honest. Make it honest. Um, Craig is here. Yay, my Black Knight. Uh, TBK is in the, the Black Knight is in the room from Bonnie Scotland. Yay, yay. And I'm always, I was pushing Craig. He's, he's got a book he's working on and it's like, I can't wait to read it when it's done. So I'm just going to keep talking about it, Craig, till that book's done. And Tina says, I got a very lovely review from dear Annette Richmond today on Amazon. Awesome. And I am wondering, Tina, if it was with a picture. So that will be interesting to know because I know, uh, uh, Am Annette is good about taking pictures with her book and she's very creative. So many people are creative. You know, you just, one of the best places to see pictures is to go to look at John Asperian's book for Content DNA. He's got so many people that posted pictures, but they're so interesting. They're so interesting. Every different way somebody has done a picture. So uh, please go check that out on, on Amazon. And by the way, all these people that are popping up, if you've read their book and like their book, go give them a review. That would be so kind. I would love to do that. So Jeff Young says, great idea. I didn't save some of my reviews that were declined and I had to try to remember what I said. Yeah, it's such a pain. So I always copy and paste them now. And, um, you know, that way I know exactly, you know, oh, okay, maybe I, I was a little bit too glowy there. <laughs> and I think it's hard. I think our natural thing is, we do want to recommend the person because if we know them, we're so proud. We're so honored to be a part of their network, but eh, just can't be doing that. Uh, Kevin is here. I'm late again, but I'm here. And I hope you heard that I talked about you today, Kevin, because Kevin's always part of the conversation. And I just love his video reviews. Fake reviews suck. I absolutely agree. And so if you go and see, if you go to somebody's um, Amazon uh, page for their book, and you see like just tons and tons and tons of, you know, five-star reviews and they're all not verified. Mm. You know, think twice, think twice. You know, I'm not saying that, that all not verified ones are true, but one of the things I did, I once gave a uh, unverified, I didn't buy the book. I actually just did the advanced reader copy and then I left my review for the person and I said, I was an advanced reader. So I clarified why I did it. Or if I was maybe, if I was saw a book at a bookstore and I bought it, I might say, I picked up this book at a bookstore, but I want us to leave a review. So I, I tried to do something so that people would say, well, you know, why is she unverified? You know, just to state my own reputation. So Karen says, is there some kind of warning about these issues? Yes, there is. So Amazon has guidelines and I'm going to post them afterwards all those help topics so that everybody's aware and authors, any authors listening, you need, you need to be responsible and stay on top of these community guidelines because things can always be changing. So it's just a good thing. But yeah, there's lots of stuff out there on, um, from Amazon and that's, you, I like to get my information from Amazon, not just somebody writing an article somewhere. So Kevin says, maybe in could learn from Amazon. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, get, get rid of the fakey stuff. Uh, Craig says, you are amazing, Jillian. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Craig. You're awesome. You're awesome. And Karen says, thank you for these warnings. Yeah, it's so important. It's so important. And LinkedIn user, I don't know who you are today, but it's okay. That was a comment about people that bribe their contacts, not about you, Jillian. Thank goodness. Yeah. And, you know, just don't, don't be, don't be incentivizing stuff, you know, like, 
okay, you know, post a review and then, you know, take a picture of your review and then I'll, I'll give you an hour, you know, a coaching or, you know, whatever. It's like, just let people review your book for the book, you know, that that's, and, you know, I'm going to be the first person to admit, I don't have a gazillion reviews. I really don't. I wish I had more. Every, every author wishes they have more, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have few, a few reviews that are honest and that I know my book actually mattered to some people than to have the vanity metrics of having all these fake reviews, but knowing in my heart of hearts, I somehow bought them and scammed them, whatever. So I don't know, just at the end of the day, let's, I just like to keep it honest. So anyways, okay, so here we go. Uh, I've reached the end of my 30 minutes. I went a little bit over, but that's okay. And I hope everybody picks something up. If you're a reader, Hopefully you now know uh, that your 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 Amazon reviews matter so much to everyone. They matter to other readers and they matter to the authors. So please, everybody, let's let's keep making those reviews. And for the authors, I hope today you've learned a little bit of uh, tips and tactics and what we can do to help make this all better in the long run. So there we go. And I will say goodbye to everybody. And I'll be back next week without the rock guys and i'll have a fabulous guest here for you and we'll have a wonderful chat see you next time bye thank you for tuning in to this edition of easy peasy books from author to authority if you found value in today's episode i'd be grateful if you could leave us a review it helps other aspiring authors discover our podcast To learn more about writing, publishing, and leveraging your business book, visit my website at easypeasybooks.com. 